Hello, welcome to another Museum Moment with Jewish Museum Milwaukee. My name is Ellie Gettinger. I am the Education Director here at Jewish Museum Milwaukee, and I am delighted to be sharing with you today about a Milwaukee icon. Um, and especially on a day like today when all you can think of is, you know, hot soup, hot sandwich, just, you know, that cozy time of year when you just want to eat. This seems like the perfect moment for today. Today we're going to be discussing Jake's Deli. Um, and Jake's Deli has a very long history. And in fact, the building itself dates back to 1903. Um, but it's this kind of amazingly robust community icon that remains uh, a big part of kind of Milwaukee's uh, cultural scene. And it really, it started out as a Jewish deli. And so we wanted to give a little bit of kind of information on that. I've got to credit my intern, Gabby, for both helping me with this research and coming up with this fabulous idea. If you have ideas for future moments or things you want to see, you know, send them to us. Maybe it'll be the perfect thing for that day. So jumping into Jake's Deli. Uh, Jake's Deli is part of a larger trajectory. Jake's Deli is part of a tradition of Jewish delicatessens that uh, were all over the country. And there were thousands of them. At one point, there was even a trade union of Jewish deli owners, which tells you the kind of power of this institution. And it really has a huge place in the Jewish American imagination in terms of you know, I think there are a number of people who think of themselves as culinary Jews, that, you know, the idea of being Jewish is a knish and a corned beef sandwich. And Jake Steli and places like it all over the country, Katz's and uh, Shapiro's in Indianapolis, I know it's one of our favorites from road trips, that those are the sorts of places that became kind of pinnacles of cultural outside facing Judaism, and in some ways became representative for the Jewish community in other parts of the community. Jake Steli is certainly a, uh, a pointer in that direction. So as we're jumping into this topic, let's start with that kind of broader deli history. And actually, before we even get into that, this is what our small piece on Jake's Deli looks like in Jewish Museum. It's in um, our section on uh, the earning a living. Um, and it includes some fabulous ads from Jake's Deli from the 1950s and 60s. And one of my favorite pieces of it is it includes a menu from Jake's Deli in the 1950s. You can see it's a much bigger menu to then than they have today. And also, I think all of us are a little bit like flabbergasted at these prices. You know, 135 for baked short ribs and 75 cents for a corned beef sandwich. I know they're a lot more expensive today. Jewish delis come from this kind of broad immigrant tradition, both of Germans coming to this country and also of Eastern Europeans coming to this country. And they merge here. And the, even the name delicatessen comes from the German word and actually a Yiddish word also. Both this is a shared word that combines the idea of delicacy and eating, which if you love deli like I do, that makes a lot of sense. Um, German Jews set up their own delis, and as Eastern European Jews started coming, they also established delis, and the food traditions were slightly different. Uh, originally, the German delis were more on the lines of prepared food, um, and really the idea of pastrami and corned beef and all of those sorts of pieces came in with the Eastern European Jews as they were arriving. One of the things about the deli uh, selections that became kind of ubiquitous was the selection and this vast selection of different cuts of beef. And beef at that time was cheap. And so this was seen as a cheap and easy way to get your meat uh, that was pre-prepared, that was uh, prepared in general. Uh, and they were popular all over the country. And it was really part of this kind of culture and tradition. There is a basic recipe for, say, uh, corned beef that includes paprika and cinnamon and, and allspice and all sorts of things like that to create that kind of delicious Eastern European corned beef flavor as to be just differentiated from an Irish corned beef flavor. What I will say also, one of those things is those are handed down recipes. Jake's Deli is no different. I believe that the recipe for corned beef and pastrami are you know, closely held secrets that have been passed down from owner to owner at this point. Um, and it's a pretty interesting thing that you have like almost 80 years of, and actually if you go back to the original in, incarnation, almost a hundred years of a passed down tradition 
of cooking. Um, so the delis grew and changed, and the delis became pillars of neighborhoods that they were in. Let's explore Jake's Deli specifically. So this edifice at 17th and North has been there since 1903. It was originally a butcher shop. And um, in the 1930s, a gentleman named Reuben Cohen took it over and made it a delicatessen. Uh, and this uh, delicatessen in 1955 was taken over by Jake Levin, who had been there since, uh, who had been a 20 year employee of Cohen's Deli. And then he took it over as Reuben Cohen was uh, was selling. He both bought the building and changed the name to Jake Levin's Delicatessen originally. And you can see these are his sincerest Passover greetings to his many friends and patrons. So in addition to the deli thing, he's saying, don't worry. You can't, even though you can't have your bread right now, we also have a complete line of Passover matzahs. Um, but the address has remained the same. The food for the most part has remained the same. The neighborhood has changed a lot. Let's talk about Jake himself. He was born in 1909 in um, Minsk and came to this country in 1923, which is an interesting time to come to the United States. It's right in between the US codifying its immigration laws. So in 1922, they changed those laws and they start letting this smaller number uh, of people from Eastern Europe like Jake to come in. And by 1924, that's close. So he's kind of in, in this interesting time in which fewer people from Poland, like himself, were able to get in. And then by a year later, it probably would have been closer to impossible. He begins working at Cohen's Deli in the 1930s. He goes and he fights in World War II, and he comes back and continues to work in Cohen's Deli. And in 1955, he takes it over, as I said. He's involved in the Jewish community. He's a member of both Beth El Nair Tamid Synagogue and then later um, Anshay Leibowitz. Um, and one of the things that he really is, um, is kind of credited with is this kind of sense of making this a real home space. That, and if you read through his advertising, which I love, Jake Levin Selicatessin at the same location, he is making this about coming to you know, his home. He says, I extend a cordial invitation to everyone to visit me. You may not recognize the interior uh, because of the touch up and paint job it is now receiving, but you will see me behind the counter. You'll know the food worries are all over. You'll recognize the old master's touch and the delicious corned beef tongue pastrami sandwiches. You'll so delightfully inhale. Soups and meat orders possess the same Tom and Geschmack uh, because they're pre prepared by our own pearl craft. So stop in, I'll be looking for you. If that doesn't sound homey and wonderful, I don't know what does. Tom and Geschmack is taste and um, I believe Geschmack is flavor. Um, and there is this real sense, especially as new owners take over, that they need to maintain that kind of sense of Yiddishkeit within this. Um, by the way, I love that, and we'll get to the new owners. I don't remember, if I don't remember your name, I'll ask my portly and genial maitre d' Irv Kassoff. He knows everybody. So Irv, similar to Jake, had worked in this deli for years and years and years. And as Jake is getting ready to retire in 1969, he's thinking he's just going to close the store down. And there's a bit of an outcry from the Milwaukee business community. The sense that, wait a second, what's going to happen if there's no Jake's to come to? And a group of pretty prominent businessmen, businessmen including Ben Barkin of Circus World fame, Julius Atkins, um, and Bud Selig, the, the future commissioner of baseball, the then owner of the Brewers, come together to form an ownership group with Irv Kassoff as their managing partner. There is a fabulous story, and actually this is a picture of the uh, these four gentlemen and Irv Kassoff all in... Um, in uh, Jake's Deli, they keep the name, they keep the menu, and they're really clear, especially for Barkin and Atkins, and their fourth partner is um, Ruben, sorry, um, that they are going to, um, uh, Julius Ruben, that they are going to maintain this as it is. And they're very much, the, Barkin, Reuben, and Atkins all grew up in this neighborhood. Um, but Selig came a little later. He grew up further west. He grew up in that Sherman Park neighborhood. This wasn't his stomping ground, but they felt like this is what they wanted. This is the taste of their mother's soup. 
this is what they wanted to maintain. And so they really did. Interestingly, in the article from the Milwaukee Journal in 1969, when this deal happens, they said uh, they've got a couple of rules. One of the big rules is that the ownership and the wives and families of ownership cannot get any discounts. And they actually say at the end of the article that they might be their best patrons. Um, and so they continue to support this institution. One of the big things that changes about Jake's Deli is the neighborhood itself. What had started as a very Jewish neighborhood when uh, Cohen's Deli opened by the 1960s and 70s is a primarily African-American neighborhood. And there's still this sense of people coming into Jake's from all over the city, but it is a predominantly the population of people who go and work there are African-American. Uh, today. And it's an interesting way that you see this continuity in the community from something, an old institution to a today institution. As evidenced by this fabulous picture that was done by artist Colleen uh, Kastner. This was in an exhibit at the Museum of Wisconsin Art in West Bend. And it was part of a show that they did about places to remember in Milwaukee that she drew images of them. And this is an image of Jake's Deli circa 2018. And you still see those same pickles and the same corned beef and the same sense of food ways, but it's a different sort of uh, clientele. And it's also the, the, the people behind the counter are different. There've been so many different um, people who've invested in the company over time. Uh, I know they're the new um, management or part of the new management group is a guy named Edward de Chazere. Uh, and and there are all of these different ways in which Jake's has engaged the community. It's had catering operations. It still has catering operations. There have been second locations. One, they were doing a food truck for a bit. I'm not sure if they still are. But they're still looking. They still maintain that same kind of flavor and feel at the location on 16th and North. Um, it is no longer kosher. So that is always something to be aware of but it is still a community institution and a place with this vibrant Jewish history that we are so delighted to be able to share today. It is my special honor to thank everyone for watching, but I'm especially gonna send one shout out to Robin Cohen, who is supporting Museum Moments financially. We so appreciate her generous support to make sure that we can keep these going. If you wanna make a donation to support Jewish Museum Milwaukee, go to jewishmuseummilwaukee.org. Thanks very much and have a great day.